there are very few video games that I can say actually disturb me. I can say they creep me out, but not all of them really disturb me. Outlast kind of disturbed me a bit with this whole theme of a fucked up hospital and what you're seeing is just its aftermath. Soma kind of unsettled me with this theme of the fact that humanity is, by all means in its universe, fucked. Inside left me feeling hollow because its world is in a shitty state and it is arguable if its world can ever be fixed. But Little Nightmares genuinely unsettles me. It's a world where children are trapped in this fucking disgusting world of conflict. You have a ship that's feeding people to people. A city where it's presumably the center point of the corruption affecting the world. And in the upcoming third game, this desert that may or may not truly explain the universe of Little Nightmares. That and the audio series that came out. Now, I would do an analysis, but if you haven't seen my community post, I'm a, li I'm a little bit depressed right now. And so I decided to do the good old YouTuber route. An iceberg. Oh my god, that's so fucking original, holy shit. But in all seriousness, I'd like to think I know a lot about the world of Little Nightmares. I've overanalyzed it with the multiple hours I have and multiple replays. And so I decided I'll do an iceberg and test my knowledge and maybe you'll learn something that you didn't know by the end of the video, I don't know. Now, obvious heads up here, I don't even feel like I should need to explain this. There are spoilers for all the Little Nightmare games and the DLC for the first game. If you do not wish to be spoiled, click off the video. Play these games, they're like eight hours, the first one you can beat in literally like four. It's, it's a good game. Anyway, let's start with the sky. The guests eat children. This is indeed true. If you are caught by one of the guests, they will grab you and throw you into their mouths whole. I don't even think they chew, they just gulp you down. And sudden to notice, they'll even stop everything they're doing just to eat you. They'd rather eat a child in a raincoat than cooked steak. Is the steak that ass or like shoe monster? Hello Nightmares, in one singular section in the janitor chapter, you are chased by a unseen monster inside of a pile of shoes. The only thing we really see of it is some dust in the shoes that it kicks up. It's never elaborated what it is or what its purpose is, and it's really just there, I guess, to scare the player. Post-credit cutscenes. In Little Nightmares 1, it's DLC, and in Little Nightmares 2, if you collect all the glitch kids, there are post-credit cutscenes. In Little Nightmares 1, we see Six standing on what looks like an island, although upon further investigation, it turns out it's the top of the maw, and it uses this to hide in the ocean and avoid being caught by if there is some authority out there that authority if there is police in the world of little nightmares i think they're a bit too busy watching the fucking channel 10 news we hear a boat horn and looking at six as a character this could mean that now that she has the lady's powers she now is serving the role of the lady and is now welcoming in these new guests to do what the lady's done with them kill them and feed the guests to the future guests in the DLC's ending, it zooms out into what looks like a living room with a strange tall man appearing on the TV where the credits were. Looking at it now, it's obvious that this was the Thin Man and very large foreshadowing for the future. Fun fact if you didn't know, the Little Nightmares devs developed the world outside the Maw before they made the world of the Maw, because the Maw is the, quote, safest place on Earth. They did this to establish just how completely fucked the rest of the world is. Little Nightmare 2's post-credit cutscene you can unlock honestly reveals a lot about what could be the timeline. We see a cutscene where Six pops out of a TV, presumably after the events of the ending. After which, she stares around and sees her shadow form appear. The Shadow Six glances over to a poster of the Maw before disappearing, and then we hear Six's stomach growl just like it did in the first game. This very heavily hints that this game is a prequel, and if it is a sequel, it hints that Six went back to the Maw, maybe to become the Lady. Lady Statues The Lady Statues can be found within Little Nightmares 1, and one of them can be found in Little Nightmares 2, although in Little Nightmares 2, it's not really got a purpose. In Little Nightmares 1, you can find them, and breaking them releases a weird black smoke and makes a little sound play. Upon breaking enough, you unlock a mask for Six, 
which looks just like the lady's mask. I really don't know what the lore implications could be. Maybe the lady is storing her powers in these statues? I don't know, the World of Low Nightmares is hard to understand. Gnomes. Gnomes are a creature or animal that has shown up throughout the entire series. They seem to find their way around despite their origins being sort of in one location. As seen at the end of the DLC, gnomes were once children turned into gnomes. The gnomes in Little Nightmares are kind of like slaves to power the engines of the Maw. They might do this because as seen in the one area, they kind of can connect with their child selves, maybe when near the fire, and so they only do it just to remember that they were once a child. If you didn't know, the World of Little Nightmares is not a happy place. There is no happy ending, especially when you look back at the first game after beating the second. Gnomes seem to be friendly, build their own little kind of huts, and don't really know how to communicate, other than just making weird gurgles. I, I don't know how to describe the noises they make other than it's like clicker noises, but not nightmare inducing. How they get out of the maw is not really explained. It could be that there are other people like the lady or other witches or something out there turning these kids into gnomes. That or maybe when the mod, you know, goes to a dock, they have a plan to all get out and thus gnomes can get out of the maw, which that would explain why there's so very few of them. The only other reason I can see them being outside is a few of them get out and if they're like animals, I don't know, do they breathe? I'm gonna stop myself right there because I'm talking about children. Basically, they're mysterious, adorable, and I hate Six for what she did to the runaway kid. You fucking bitch. That is the sky. Let's go ahead and get onto the ice. Giant cracks. Um... I, I actually don't know what they're trying to get at here. It could perhaps be trying to talk about, say, like some cracks in the maw or cracks across buildings in the Pale City, but that's really all I can think of. Perhaps it's talking about that giant, like, gap we see in the Pale City and that the world is kind of physically messed up, but I, I really don't know what they're trying to imply here. Also, sorry if my voice sounds like shit, I just woke up and I have a head cold. Yeah. Low Nightmares 2 is a prequel. This theory has a lot of evidence to back it up. Like I mentioned earlier, the whole secret post-credit cutscene we see heavily implies Six either went back to the Maw or went to the Maw in the first place after Low Nightmares 2. And also, when we start, Six doesn't have her raincoat. This very heavily implies that the first game takes place after this. Very Little Nightmares. Very Little Nightmares is a mobile Low Nightmares game that is, in fact, Canon. We play as who we assume at first to be Six, actually a semi named the Raincoat Girl. We do see Six here as a prisoner, and this place is called The Nest. It's a giant mansion on top of a very thin spiraling rock. Like seriously, how the hell can that thing support the weight of a mansion? Like, how is it not falling? The game features three unique characters. The craftsman, the butler, and the owner of the nest, the pretender. It's presumed that he makes dolls for the pretender, who I'll get into that in a second. The butler, who uses telekinesis to organize things and is very loyal to the pretender. Finally, the pretender, who is basically the owner of the nest. As seen throughout the game, she has an obsession with dolls and has your stereotypical rich, spoiled kid attitude. If things don't go her way, she is not at all happy. She has a sonic scream that will just stun anybody near her and also can evaporate children, literally disintegrating them. The game ends with this mysterious girl that we've seen and our protagonist getting in a chase with the pretender. The mysterious girl tries to help by dropping a boulder on the pretender, which stuns her, but ultimately she ends up getting back up and pushing us down into the water to where we presumably die. We then see that the girl gets out of the place and hops on a raft. And presumably, this is Six. It's presumed that she either, if Low Nightmares 2 is first, went to the Pale City, or if Low Nightmares 1 is first, took the Rinko and went to the Maw. A lot of people don't really talk about it in the timeline, and I even forget it fucking exists sometimes, because it's a mobile game. I don't play in mobile games, but I mean, hey, hats off to Tars here for taking the opportunity to get into the mobile market, you know what I mean? They. They, they need more money is never back but in all seriousness it is canon to the story and does have some critical info i mean for god's sake the butler can use telekinesis i mean 
we've not really seen that anywhere else. Also, the craftsman's fucking legs being backwards just really fucks with me, I don't know why. Something about monsters looking so disfigured but being able to move just unsettles me severely. Little Nightmares 2 is a prequel. As I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of evidence backing up the theory that Little Nightmares 2 takes place before Little Nightmares 1. If we're to assume this, then the timeline is most likely very Little Nightmares, Little Nightmares 2, Little Nightmares 1, and maybe Little Nightmares 3, but we don't really know where it is on the timeline yet. Mainly because, like, it's not out. Little Nightmares 2, Secret Ending. Did I end up, like, accidentally talking about this entire layer before I even actually talked about it? Lone Nightmares 2, upon collecting all the glitched remains of children, you get a secret cutscene that seems to hint that Lone Nightmares 1 is actually after this. The glitched remains are not really understood. We see Six's glitched remains, and maybe even Shadow Six is her glitched remain. But it is assumed that these glitched remains are the victims of the Thin Man, perhaps trying to replace himself with another Thin Man. The viewers are being sucked in by TVs. And there's a lot of evidence to back this up. One of the first ones you may not know of is on a piece of fan art posted by somebody on Twitter, it shows a viewer almost sucking in or ingesting presumably content from the TV. The Little Nightmares Twitter account, the official one, responded and said, Stunning, if we could offer one small corrective, reverse the flow. This implies that the TV is instead absorbing the viewer, not the viewer absorbing the TV. Another thing to look at is how their faces seem almost sucked out or ripped off. Their faces are gone and the only thing that remains is a hole or just bigger holes. It can be assumed that their face is like this because the TV physically absorbed their face. Perhaps the flesh in the tower is from all of the absorbed viewers. We also later on see just pieces of clothing near TVs, implying that the TVs quite literally can just absorb people whole. This and the amount of clothing that seems to lie around just implies people were just flat out sucked in by the TVs, most likely creating the weird flesh that we see with inside the tower. Throat is dying. <laughs> the comics. There are two series of comics, but one of them was canned. The first one was published by Titan Comics and was written by John Shackelford. The plot was apparently written by people who worked on Assassin's Creed. Okay. The comics seem to show Six either in the Maw or going back to the Maw. It's a bit weird because she sees the lady, but... If she's in the kitchen by the time the events are done, huh? Anyway, Six basically finds a group of children, and the whole comic, I presume, was most likely them telling their stories of how they got here and why they're so deformed or the horrible events of their lives. It introduced a lot of unique monsters and characters that I really wish were still canon. The fairy man is this large reptilian person who kidnaps the kids and brings them to the maw. His face basically reaches his knees. There's the mirror monster who is able to seemingly kind of create kids perfect dreams and then absorb them whole once they get distracted. Its face is nothing but just a bunch of tentacles. And then one of my personal favorites, the North Wind. The North Wind's main appearance is this large black figure which I think is made of crows, but I think it might just be to establish the North Wind's there. The actual wind itself is this red thing that will just chase and can manipulate the minds of people around it and presumably hunch children. When these comics first came out, everyone basically assumed the North Wind is the reason why the world is so fucked, but now that they were canned, we know that it's... It's probably the broadcast tower, not the North Wind. The next comics were official and were actually canon. Each of them take place from the perspective of some kids and establish a little bit about what the world is kind of about. They're also used to kind of introduce some of the monsters. The first one is Six running away from the hunter in the woods before spotting Mono on top of a tree. She gets distracted and the hunter catches her. This seems to imply that before even seeing Six, Mono knew who she was. Perhaps he wanted to save her and that's why we do what we do at the start of Little Nightmares 2. The next one is about this almost toddler looking character trying to find food in the wilderness. He has a nightmare and wakes up after hearing a scream in an old shed. He goes to investigate the scream and is presumably taken by the Thin Man. The third one is about a girl trapped in a hospital who digs through the floor using spoons to try to escape. It's not known who gives her all these spoons, but she uses them to escape. However, upon going through the hole, she finds out she's back in the same room she was trying to get out of, but now the door's open. She walks out, and it ends with the doctor behind her, presumably implying she was killed. The next one shows a chubby boy in a school trying to hide from the porcelain bullies. He uses his lollipop to smash one of their heads and goes to hide in the locker. 
but by the end, he is caught by the teacher. The next one is about a kid wearing a ghost costume who's scavenging for food within an apartment. After which, he finds a wounded rat, and hoping to save it, he tries to take the rat, but the viewers in the room hear him, and he is killed, presumably by the viewers. The final one is Mono and some kids inside of a burning building. They seem to be panicking, but eventually the sprinklers activate and get rid of the fire. However, presumably the Thin Man, Thin Man, the Thin Man then appears and starts abducting kids. Mono goes to hide in a broken TV, and judging by the shadow, it can really be debated if this is the Thin Man, or maybe he just lost his hat. After that, a loud crackling, or almost fleshy sound is heard, seeming to imply that Mono was killed? But then how would he be alive if he was killed? Or perhaps the creature was killed? Or something? I, I don't know, Little Nightmares is weird. Alright, anyway, I've talked about the comics for way too long, let's go ahead and move on to the next subject now. The Time Loop. This theory is created because in Little Nightmares 2, Mono becomes the Thin Man at the very end of the game, looking identical to him. A lot of people theorize that this entity or those eyes in the tower are sort of pulling the strings in a way, and causing time itself to be stuck in a permanent loop of being reset. I personally disagree. I think it's more that just Mono has now taken the throne, and the prior king, the original Thin Man, is now dead. Same with the whole theory of Six becoming the lady. She isn't the lady every time we fight her, she's just now this generation of the lady. You're really telling me those eyes are gonna constantly be resetting the janitor's arms back onto their stumps? But the theory is basically that the world is stuck in a loop, obviously, and to some people, the world itself is stuck in a time loop of the games forever repeating. Gnomes are children. This is true, as seen at the end of the DLC in Little Nightmares 1 and the Shadows in the second part of the DLC, the gnomes are indeed children. Alright, now that we're off of the top of the iceberg, let's dive into them cold waters. And I'd bring a raincoat if I were you. Bloody Nose Girl Easter Egg In Little Nightmares 2, if you decide to not go down the hallway of fucking terrors, you can instead go into a room which is identical to the room that the Bloody Nose Girl from the comics was in. You can throw a piece of cheese into a hole in the floor and weird noises will come out, and presumably it's animals or rats eating the cheese. If you throw, say, a tin can, they'll just toss it back out at you. Hunger Hunger was the original name that Little Nightmares was gonna have. But the developers eventually realized if you look up Hunger Game, you know, as in video game, you're not gonna get their game, you're just gonna get the Hunger Games. So they decided to name it to Little Nightmares. Veronica Song Lyrics Also, if I sound different, uh, back when I was working on this, my snowball mic went kaput and I didn't know how to fix it for a day. So if I sound different than the rest of the audio, that's why. Back on topic, the Veronica Song Lyrics. When listening closely to the song that plays, or the first song that can play when messing with the TV in Low Nightmares 1, and sometimes it'll come out of the TVs in Low Nightmares 2, it sounds like the Veronica song, as the community has named it, sounds like it's one, talking about somebody named Veronica, but other things about the game, like a ship out at sea, a fairy, possibly hinting about the ferryman, and other strange things. While it could possibly just be gibberish, because in Low Nightmares 2, the TVs, literally just have gibberish coming out of them. Fun fact about Little Nightmares, the language that you see in Little Nightmares 2 on signs, that's actually entirely made up. It's not even an actual language. It's by all means gibberish. However, the Veronica song may possibly be a legit song, but distorted. As seen in this next entry, Real Veronica Song. People on YouTube have found out that the song bears a resemblance to an actual old song called Down in the Valley. The song is very old and talks about a girl going on a wedding. It's possible that they took this song and simply just distorted it. Because, I mean, listen to it. Down in the valley where the green grass grows, where Lady Lee, she grows like a rose, she grows, she grows, she grows so sweet that she calls for a lover at the end of the sea. They either took the rhythm and tone of it and completely just re-sang it in gibberish, or just distorted it to high hell. Different TV channels. 
I presume this entry is talking about how in Low Nightmares 1, the TV you use to distract the janitor has multiple channels, not just the whole Veronica song. The second channel that can appear is one with a hand that has an eye in the middle of it and some weird noise in the background. The next one shows a bunch of triangles with eyes and very loud static in the background, almost looking like a kind of error screen. The next one is just TV static. After that, it's a what looks like horror show of some almost old Dracula looking creature leaning over a child. After that one, pressing the button more just kind of loops it. In Lord Nightmares 2, when Mono is using the TV, images will flash very quickly on the screen. They're almost all from locations, characters, and other things that we've seen throughout the game. In Little Nightmares 2, however, the TVs play music, and there's this, this whole list of songs that can come out of them. One of them is a heavy metal song called Death Burger. Wax Bellman. The Wax Bellman was a cut character, although in the current Sounds of Nightmares, it's kinda hinted he might be coming back through that series. Noon's description of a certain character sounds very similar to what the Wax Bellman looked like. He was cut from the game, sadly, but he still kind of appears throughout the series. He has paintings of him, and one of the main things that was hinted about him was at Gamescon back when the game was first announced. They had a person dressed up as the Bell Waxman, the Bell Waxman. At Gamescon, there was a mirror, and people could go up to the mirror and look at themselves. When doing so, behind the mirror turned out to be a person dressed up as the Wax Bellman, where a light would shine on him and, you know, they'd spook you. It's kind of somewhat hinted that the mirror that you have to break through in the guest level is kind of a homage to the Wax Bellman. There was also a cut hat of him in Little Nightmares 2, which I, I wish that was- I wish they kept that. But, like I said, other than the sounds of Little Nightmares hinting he might be coming back, he is a, by all means, cut character. The Hunter taxidermied himself. This theory kind of sort of makes sense when you really look at the Hunter's model. When you look at the Hunter, he has these holes in his clothing which appear to have stuffing coming out of the holes. That and his clothing looks like it's all kind of stitched up together. It can be assumed through the strangeness of the World of Low Nightmares, he taxidermied himself and brought himself to life. Perhaps all the taxidermied animals and even people we see is him attempting to bring back other people from the dead, just like himself. Doctor No. Okay, I'll admit, this one took me a lot to find out about. Apparently in a room is a painting hidden behind a tarp, and when you look at it, you can see what looks like a person, and I guess he's called Doctor No. I didn't even know this painting existed, so you learn something new every day. How the Taxidermy Family Died. It's never explained how the taxidermied family was taxidermied. I mean, you could just say, oh, the hunter shot him, but I mean, look what his shotgun can do to a wooden crate, let alone a person. Now, I do hear some people argue, oh, well, when Mono gets shot, he doesn't explode. Uh, there's this thing called an age rating. They want to keep it so, like, people can play it, right? They're not gonna make this, like, inside, where you can watch the main character get splattered into bits. So it can maybe be assumed by the fact they're at a dinner table, maybe he poisoned them, or maybe they simply are just people who died from some strange way and we just don't know. Dark Six and Hunger Scenes In Low Nightmares 1, every time there's a hunger scene and Six goes to eat, somewhere, if you look closely, you can always find a shadow version of herself. It can be assumed that this is perhaps the shadow her that was formed in Low Nightmares 2 after the Thin Man took her. Now forever haunting her and maybe even being the source of her hunger. The TV show. I... I really don't know what this could mean. I can assume maybe it's trying to ask what exactly are the TV shows the viewers are watching, but I mean, if you look at the TVs, it's pretty much just static. Perhaps only they can see the TV show now that they've given up their face. Maybe this entry is talking about the TV shows that show up in Little Nightmares 1 and what exactly they're about, but I mean, we'll never know because they're just like six second loops of clips. It could possibly depict some concept art of Mono walking into a sort of sitcom, with these weird disfigured adults, and that might be what it's talking about, but I really don't know exactly what this layer is about. But now that we're done with this layer, it's about to get a little bit colder. The comic children are remains now. This theory possibly could be true. A lot of remains that we see are presumably kids who have now died due to the Thin Man or just died. Almost like, in a weird sci-fi way, a ghost. And judging by the fact that most of these comics seem to end with the kids presumably dying or dying off screen, it is possible all that remains of them now is their glitched remains. 
Little dreams. Huh? Okay, so I did a little bit of research. Basically, um, it appears that this is a, like, Little Nightmares fan creation in Little Big Planet 3. It uses a bunch of assets and some custom models and stuff, and, uh, yeah, I, I, I guess that's a thing, I, I suppose. The third chef. As far as we're aware, there were multiple chefs that originally were going to be in the kitchen, but it was eventually cut down to the twins. We don't know the maximum, but judging by some images, it can be assumed it was at least up to three. I think they probably scrapped it just so that way the level didn't feel overfilled. I don't know how to describe it. I guess they wanted to save this whole idea of big groups for the guests, and so the whole idea is the twins are just the twins. Instead of it being, oh, it's chef number one, chef number two, they now have a name and are a bit more impactful. The guests eat previous guests. Children in Little Nightmares are very tiny, and I doubt they could probably produce a lot of meat to feed these motherfuckers huge appetite. A hint to this was on a tweet from Little Nightmares, where they were tweeting out a really cool looking artwork piece made by somebody, and jokingly in the title said that Six is not very fond of vegetables. A person jokingly responded, saying she's not very fond of sausages either, rather eat other meat, making fun of the moment she ate a gnome in Little Nightmares 1. The Little Nightmares account replied, but when you know what the sausages are made of in the Maw, you can understand the choice. Also, I mean, look at the size of some of the meat in the first game, there is no way that's a child. And also on the Little Nightmares website, it says guests will leave the Maw one way or another. The Barber. The Barber was a cut character in Little Nightmares 2 who was a barber who had, by the best way to describe it, comically large scissors. He was probably cut due to either pacing or they didn't want to overdo the amount of monsters in the city but pictures of him can be found through paintings in both the first and second game. The Lunch Lady. The Lunch Lady was originally meant to be an antagonist in the school level, who was most likely cut due to pacing. I mean, with all the bullies and the teacher, adding a third monster on top of that would be a bit overkill. And besides, one of the main themes of Little Nightmares is this sense of isolation that the world's pretty empty. However, there's a nod to her in the actual game, where if you sneak into a freezer room, you can find her dead body. Leg Leeches. Originally, leeches were gonna have legs and could walk and run to you. I am, by all means, glad they cut that. They're already fast in the first DLC. They don't need to be faster. The North Wind. As mentioned earlier, the North Wind was a monster that showed up in the comics, being a wind that was able to kind of trick people's minds to kill them. A lot of people lately have been theorizing that perhaps the North Wind could reappear in the third game, because of the whole, like, winds and the desert and yada yada. I kind of doubt that. A lot of people seem to think that Little Nightmares 3 is gonna, like, make the old comics that got scrapped canon. I, I doubt they're gonna do that, to be honest. The Cook. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I tried looking up, all I could get was just images of the chef. And that's it. I physically don't know what this entry could be talking about. If anyone knows, comment below, I'll pin it, heart it, whatever. I don't know what this is implying. The lunch lady is dead. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. The Little Nightmares 2 DLC. This could be referring to the Gnome in the Nest DLC, which all it really does is give you a tiny little section of the hunter's cabin and an extra hat. I really don't think it's worth the cash. It could possibly be trying to talk about how people wanted a DLC to expand on the game more, but what do you know? We got a whole sequel. The lady is the fifth lady. There's a painting that can be found in the ladies' quarters that shows what appears to be her and four other ladies. This right here, I think, really supports my idea that Six becoming the lady in the whole time loop theory isn't actually meaning Six has always been the lady, but that she's just the next generation of the lady. There were four prior to the lady, and now Six is going to take the throne after gaining her powers. C-O-M. I mean, the capitalization definitely means it's, like, a... something. At first, I assumed it standard for something like Call of the Maw, or Call of Maw, but, like, what is that part of? Is it, like, the Horn of the Maw? I mean, the main menu theme is called Lure of the Maw. Once again, if any of you know what this means, please tell me. I... I don't know what this stands for. The Craftsman appears in a TV channel. While I doubt this is true, 
In the TV channel with the creepy shadowy figure, they have a big nose and claw-like hands, very similar to, say, the Craftsman from Very Little Nightmares. I think this is more of a coincidence than any type of, like, theory. Alright, well, it's about to get even deeper. I don't know if a raincoat's gonna help you now. The hunter used to work in the hospital. I can kinda sorta see this possibly being true. Being a taxidermist does require some medical knowledge, so I can definitely see them possibly being a worker at the hospital. And also, inside of his attic is mannequin parts, and if you know anything about the doctor, he uses mannequin parts. It could be possible he gathered them from the hospital. The map of the world. As seen in Little Nightmares 2, there's a map of the world and it looks very different than ours, although it's presumably only a chunk of it. Lost Boy Poster. This seems to refer to a missing poster that can appear in the newspaper textures, and it almost looks like one of the bullies, kinda? That was about the most info I could really get out of doing research here, and so it appears that this boy is very important, obviously, if there's a missing poster of him in this world of dead kids. With how kids are treated in this world, this boy must be very important. The hangman is the pretender's father. The legs of the hangman appear very similar to the legs of the presumably pretender's parents in the nest, both having dark pants and dark shoes. Although, I personally think this is more of a coincidence than actual proof. The principal. In the Low Nightmares 2 concept art and in some pictures in the game, a picture of a guy with these black tentacles coming out of his face can be found. Judging by the location of the photo and then the concept art, a creature very similar to him appears in the school concept art, it's very heavily assumed he was meant to be a sort of teacher of sorts, or a school staff or worker. Probably just like the lunch lady, he was cut so the level didn't feel overly bloated. Can you imagine having to deal with the teacher, the numerous bullies, the lunch lady, and the principal? And even bigger, how much of a pain that would be to program and design and not feel boring over and over? That, yeah, I can see why they cut it. The wilderness is an island. I can kind of sort of get behind this theory. The wilderness seems to be very far away from the city, and the only way that Mono and Six are able to access it is by using a, a broken off door and floating it off through sea to reach the city. And judging by the fact that there's those little Bowie lights, it's most likely that this place is at least near or at the ocean. Static References Static was a VR game made by Tarzir Studios. I don't really know a lot about it, but it does appear to be a game where your hands are in a box, and I assume you have to solve puzzles doing that, and it makes the game a challenge and whatever. Like I've said, I've never played it, so I really don't know what it is, but throughout the games there is lots of references to it. It's mainly through paintings and photos found throughout the game. The janitor comes from the hospital. This theory comes from this room right here, where you can see a sort of, I should say short man in a hospital bed. People assume, or theorize, that the janitor was the creation of the doctor taking a person's arms and legs and completely just changing their size, giving the janitor his extremely long arms but very short and stubby legs. While I can see this, I really doubt this is actually the truth. Have you seen some of the deformities of these people? I mean, the teacher. Have you seen her neck? If anything, the janitor's arms might just be as natural as the teacher's neck. Six doesn't want to grow up. Yeah, I'll fail you. I can kind of sort of understand, I think, what it's trying to get at. I think it's more of Six doesn't want to move on. I mean, if we're to assume she's from Very Little Nightmares and we've seen her through everything up to two, do you know what that could do to a kid's mental health? Very Little Nightmare, she, by accident, gets somebody that was trying to help her killed. In Little Nightmares 2, she's kidnapped in a hunter's basement for god knows how long, and the only thing to keep her sane is a music box. Suddenly, Paper Bag Boy comes busting through the door with an axe and just interrupts her peace. She follows him around and goes to the city and ends up presumably either finding the same raincoat from the raincoat girl in Very Little Nightmares, or just a random raincoat that reminds her of her friend. So that, obviously, is gonna bring flashbacks back to her. And not to mention all the danger that Mono gets her into from being kidnapped to the bullies, from having to be separated for a while, to eventually getting kidnapped by the Thin Man. And it's very clear time in the tower does not flow the way it does outside. What to Mono might have been a few hours of getting to the tower could have been decades, years, or centuries to six. 
and the only thing with her there was her music box. And then Mono comes back and interrupts what could have been, to her, possibly a peaceful time. And then right after we do this, she has to start booking it or else she's gonna die. And she finally is given a chance to look right at the person who basically dragged her into all this in the first place. And ultimately decides, yeah, you know what, fuck you. And so I think with all that, I think she'd rather just stay the child she was prior to everything that went down in her life. She probably wishes that she never grew up and went down the route that she went. Perhaps in Little Nightmares 1, she uses the lady's powers to stay young forever. I mean, it seems like the lady definitely looks young with her actual character model, but her reflection shows, I believe, her actual age. While the lady looks young, she's disgustingly old, and I think Six might use that part of her powers. Anyway, I just went on a like, two-minute tangent. Yeah, Six doesn't want to grow up. I, I can probably see why in the world she's in. The North Wind is dead. This might refer to that maybe the North Wind is just not canon anymore, or that the North Wind is dead and something happened in the comics I don't know of because I've never read the old comics. The Pretender's dolls are made of children. I can see this definitely being true in the world below nightmares. We can see the janitor, the janitor fucking great. We can see the craftsman handling what looks like skin in bathtubs. And later on, we see the dolls that appear to have, by all means, skin. It can thus be assumed that the skin is from children or people who were killed and then put onto dolls. We're starting to get to the bottom of the iceberg now. Things are gonna get really weird. The Lady Once Had Children. In Little Nightmares 1, there is a painting of the lady next to a child. It's not known who this child is, and it could be assumed maybe she became the next lady after that lady in the photo. Originally, people used to think that this was Six, but that was debunked by one of the devs. It's not known what happened to the girl or if the girl's even the lady's daughter, but we just know that the lady had a kid or took care of a kid at some point. Everything is turning into a TV show. I really don't know where the evidence for this is, other than some concept art for the whole sitcom scene I mentioned earlier. Perhaps it's trying to imply the camera that we see is canon? I'm just pulling shit out of my ass here. I really don't know what this one is trying to imply. I mean, it would be interesting if the world was indeed a TV show of sorts, but wouldn't that really remove the fear of it being an actual fucked up world? Ending leak. The only real info I could sadly get about this was about a leak for Low Nightmares 2 on Tumblr, and I can't find the Tumblr post, so I don't really know what they leaked. But it does appear there was a leak for Low Nightmares 2 on Tumblr, so take with that what you will. Moth. In Low Nightmares 2, a gigantic moth can be found in a cage, even bigger than Mono or Six. Other creatures in the game appear to be the same size as their real life counterparts. So it's not really known why this moth is so fucking big. But if the leeches and the giant beetles in the Little Nightmares 3 trailers are anything to go off of, not every bug follows realistic physics. The granny is the previous lady. This theory does have some mild evidence to support it. One, the photo earlier of what appears to be five ladies, hinting there's been multiple before her. And two, when the lady goes to look at her reflection in the DLC, Correct me if I'm wrong, it's literally just the granny's face thrown onto hers. Maybe it's a little bit different with color, or slightly edited, but it's virtually the same face as the granny. This might be why that there's multiple generations of ladies. Perhaps their power can't keep them young in the way they are forever, and they eventually become like the granny, and physically do age. Now as to how the granny can breathe and live underwater, I really don't know, but we can assume she was perhaps the previous lady. The TVI enemy. Originally in Little Nightmares 2, there was going to be an enemy similar to the eyes that turn you into stone in the first game, but it was through the TVs, and it was a giant eye inside of a TV. It was probably cut because it's just a copy and paste of the eyes that turn you to stone, and there's more interesting ways you can create hazards for the player in that game. That, and it might have not fit the whole story, because while obviously the flesh and the TV have a connection, it seems a bit odd that the flesh would be peering out of very specific TVs and could turn you to stone. So I can definitely see why they scrapped it. The teacher comes from the hospital. 
I believe this theory is just like the whole theory about the janitor coming from the hospital. But there's no evidence. I mean, with how fucked the world is, I mean, the doctor can climb on the ceiling. I think a stretchy neck is well within the realm of whatever the fuck is going on in this world. Not to mention, her neck can go from freaking giraffe to normal. And I don't think throwing some mannequin parts on her or messing with her bones could really allow her to do that. Unless her spine wraps around inside of her stomach, I don't see how that's possible. The Dunsat bully is drawing the whole plot of Little Nightmares 2. In Little Nightmares 2, you can find a bully that appears to be tied up onto the wall with a dunce hat, presumably being punished. He can be seen making graffiti of what appears to be the signal tower, eyes, TVs, and appears to understand what's going on. It can even be assumed there's even a picture of the Thin Man. But to say it's the whole plot is a bit of a stretch, but it does appear he is well aware of what's going on and was perhaps punished for knowing too much. We're finally leaving the ice and entering the water. I'd bring a lighter because it's going to get a little bit dark down here. The triangle eye is the transmission symbol. I can kind of sort of see it, judging by the fact the transmission presumably occurs through the flesh and the eyes. Perhaps it's a nod to the Illuminati, or the triangle symbol used to represent it, which, fun fact, that's not actually their logo, this is the Illuminati's logo. But it's probably to symbolize that the transmission is all-seeing, and implying that they may be able to see the whole world and are probably responsible for messing up the whole world and not just the Pale City. Non-hostile adults. There are very few non-hostile adults in the series, mainly being the woman on the TV in the Veronica song, some adults in the original scrapped comics, and in the current Sounds of Low Nightmares, the therapist for Noon, and also Noon's parents, I forgot to mention that. Throughout pretty much the entire rest of the game, every adult has some want or thirst to just kill you. While the Sounds of Low Nightmares would require its own entire episode to dig, it does kind of hint that adults didn't used to be like this and to an extent the world. Without spoiling anything and going into major detail, it hints that the world was normal and that something happened to completely ruin it and the first symbol or warning of this was dreams from people like Noon. And I just want to clarify that's a theory, I'm probably wrong because I'm, I'm not the writer of the game. So perhaps the adults were at one point normal and then turned hostile. And also, you gotta think about this. You need birds and bees to make kids. Unless they magically showed up, which was kind of hinted in an interview with the writer of Little Nightmares. Where he said kids have a quote-unquote reason for being where they are. So adults are out there somewhere making kids. Or kids are just finding their way into this reality of sorts. The Sounds of Little Nightmares very heavily hints that this place is either all a dream world or maybe even a separate reality. Anyway, let's get on the next one. The lady killed her children in a fire. I can actually kind of sort of see this. In the DLC for Little Nightmares 1, if you drag a book to another bookshelf across the entire lady's quarters, you can open up a secret passage which has a vase with ashes in it, and next to the vase is presumably the burnt remains of kids. Perhaps these were the lady's children and she burnt them. Maybe if the lady finds a kid and she doesn't turn him into a gnome, maybe she just incinerates him. As fucked as it is, we're in the world of little nightmares, that's kinda possible. There's a war going on. With the utter state and decay of the world, it can kinda sorta be seen where this theory comes in. The world sometimes looks like it's been through a war, with how decayed and abandoned the buildings are, with some of them managing to still have electricity. On Reddit, there was this post on r slash nightmares by Gaming Lore Observer, where they had some kind of pretty damn good evidence. A lot of the clothing, architecture, and other things appear to be from the 1940s and that time era. TVs don't have color, and we know they didn't back in the 1940s. There's also no cars around, and I did a little bit of research here. Cars became widely used in the 1920s, and by widely me having a stroke I widely use I mean anybody that could afford them and it can maybe be assumed that because of you know the Great Depression and the fact that everybody in Little Nightmares 2 is watching TV cars just stopped having a use or we just coincidentally never see a car the teacher and students both wear clothing that resemble the 1940s and on the reddit post they theorize that the teacher might possibly be trying to indoctrinate kids into the tower which is like why would you indoctrinate kids? 
made of porcelain. And also they state that perhaps the Ma was made before World War II and is used to express Japanese culture because, you know, I'm not going to try to sugarcoat it. In World War II, Japanese people were treated like hot shit, which makes sense. Their country had bombed our fucking country. So perhaps the Ma is a way to define this hatred to Japan. This is getting very fucking political. And they also theorize near the end that perhaps the monsters are sort of an experiment by the Nazis because, you know, the Nazis did like to do little experiments. Yeah, there is some theory and evidence supporting this, but I just look at it as the world seems old school. I really doubt the devs are trying to hint that this is all in World War II. And if anything, I'm pretty sure that this is all just coincidence. Maybe if the broadcast tower has been going on for so long, the Pale City never technologically advanced, so they still have black and white TVs, no cars, and other things. I'd also like to add, cars obviously do exist, as there are appearing to be bus stop signs and benches in the city. The hunter is Dr. No. i am be honest here, the only real evidence of this could be that the hunter knows how to taxidermy, which requires medical experience, and Dr. No has some pretty fat hands, just like the Hunter. Really about the only evidence supporting that. The tower was made to make people happier during World War II. This is actually a theory I heard about a while ago, that they built the TV to distract people in World War II, but went too far. And I can, just like the World War II theory, I can see it, but I don't necessarily believe it. Perhaps to keep people happy while their country is at war, they would broadcast whatever would appease their minds and went so far that they literally turned their people into faceless sheep. Emphasis on faceless. But then that makes me question, where does the flesh and eye come into this? Actually, where does that even come into with the World War II theory? I mean, what exactly is the flesh and eye to an extent? Is it this entity that's fucking over the world through the broadcast? And if so, why would people use this creature to help everyone? Unless it was genetically made via people? I don't know. This isn't like Death Stranding where the lore is really complex but everything can be explained. Anyway, we're about to go even deeper and it's gonna get even colder. Inside of the tower was inspired by old Lil Nightmares 1 concept art. I tried looking at concept art of Lil Nightmares 1 but I don't really think it resembles the inside of the tower. Maybe like crooked doors and crooked shaped objects could be seen as somewhat inspired, but that might just fit the whole tower's theme of distortion. So I really couldn't find any concept art, or maybe I'm just not searching hard enough. Inside of the tower is a pocket dimension. I can kind of sort of understand this in a way. The tower itself definitely is not normal and might be outside of our space and time. Gravity here functions very differently, and time presumably passes very differently as well. It can be assumed that with things such as hints towards Little Nightmares 1, mainly through a painting that can be found of Six eating a gnome in the same briefcase that she wakes up in, maybe the tower is just somewhere in reality and can see both the future and past. If the time loop theory is right, then this all is basically just a looping the pocket dimension making sure everything goes the way it's meant to. The flesh void is made of viewers. I can definitely see this being true, but at the same time, there is a point that kind of sort of holds us back. Look at all of that flesh. You're telling me just sucking people's faces and bodies created this building of flesh? I think it'd take a bit more than just a few people and some faces. Maybe this implies that a majority of the population is actually dead and now in the flesh void or flesh mass. There's also some concept art depicting what appears to be flesh coming out of TVs into the tower, although this was probably scrapped because rating. Fun fact, the old concept art for the tower depict a much more gruesome and honestly disgusting depiction. The transmission faces. I was unable to find out what this might mean. It could possibly mean the distorted paintings found within the tower. It could possibly refer to this piece of concept art depicting faces watching Mono as he went through the tower but I believe it most likely refers to that concept art. Mono's old designs. It appears that Mono's design never actually really changed much throughout the concept art stage. It might have possibly been that he wore a different mask or no mask at all, and the really only big sign I can find of a different design 
was in the barber's concept art with a boy in all blue clothing, which perhaps could have been Mono's prior design, but it appears his design has pretty much stayed the same since they created the game. Although maybe there's just tons of concept art, we just don't know. We're getting closer and closer to the bottom now. Get ready. Originally, children were turned into thin men in the hospital. This entry most likely refers to concept art that depicted children having these tendrils attached to their face. Now, we'll never know what exactly the point of that was because this was scrapped, but a possibility is that because Mono and Six don't seem to be distracted by the TVs, the doctor forces them to become distracted by the TVs and thus become child viewers via attaching these tendrils to their face. As far as we're aware, children can withstand the broadcast. But it does definitely fit the theme of the hospital of the doctor removing people's humanity, which in the final game can be seen through mannequins. The Low Nightmares 2 Cut Maw Sublevel. Why do I just not know half this iceberg, man? The only thing that really alludes to this is the cutscene that you get at the end of Low Nightmares 2 when you collect all the glitching remains, but I, I couldn't find anything about a cut maw level. The teacher might have had wings. As if that fucking neck wasn't horrifying enough. Yeah, in an interview, one of the developers stated that during some concept art, they had a point where they thought of giving the teacher wings. I am glad that did not make the final fucking cut. The tower is an experiment. I can kinda sorta understand this theory. I mean, it would take a lot of money to build a tower that big, and it would also be really expensive for the broadcast to be as strong and broad as it is. Not to mention, seeing as people become addicted to the TVs, and by the old school architecture, and if we know anything about us humans back then, we loved experimenting, especially during war. Hey, I just made this new thing, it's called mustard gas, let's throw it in a trench. So it isn't far off to say that humanity made the TV as an experiment, and it just ended up going too far. Old teacher model. This might be referring to the concept art, but in all honesty, she looked pretty similar to what she is now. I did find a YouTube clip, though, of an older version of the teacher's model with older animations, and I believe it's... <laughs> I'm a car now. <laughs> it probably refers to that. I b well, we're about to reach the bottom now. I hope you're ready. The Flesh Void is an Eldritch God. This theory can make sense if you look at it in a certain way. Eldritch Gods are usually depicted as beings that are the size of castles, buildings, towers, and are just these gigantic creatures that no one person could stop. They often are extremely powerful and usually are undefeatable unless the character has some kind of magic, which I guess you could maybe put that over to Mono's TV powers. But perhaps if the Void is an Eldritch God, its powers is what allows it to keep the tower going, cause time within the tower to be fucked, and is the reason why the world is so distorted via it's just powers. Its powers ruin the world and leaving children just stuck here in a fucked up situation. However, the Sounds of Little Nightmares has kinda sorta debunked this a little bit. I think. I don't know, it's, a, it's mainly theorizing right now. Within that, there's a scene where Noon mentions that the Nowhere is a place that people can't get, and it's heavily hinted that whenever she's in Nowhere, she's dreaming, or is, according to Otto, physically fucking transported there and she just disappears. Perhaps some kids are stuck here because something? We don't really know. So. This theory may not end up being true. There is something higher than the Flesh Void. If the Flesh Void came into existence, something had to have probably made it. There is perhaps a being even higher than the Flesh Void, which we might see in Little Nightmares 3, such as whatever lies in that mirror. Perhaps this thing in the mirror rivals the Flesh Void, if not even more powerful than it. Perhaps the Flesh Void was created by humanity as an extent to just try to save the world, but ended up fucking it over. While we don't really know if there's something higher than it, if there is something higher than the Flesh Void, it's most likely the reason the world is so fucked. The Heart of the Flesh Void I really don't know if the Flesh Void has a heart. I'll be honest, if it does, it's most likely the Thin Man. Perhaps its heart is simply the energy of the TVs going to it. Perhaps the heart is just the entire being itself. 
I mean, with the way that Mono is positioned, and also to an extent the Thin Man in that chair, it could be looked at as if they are the heart or the core powering the Flesh Void. They may be the heart itself. Well, that was a video. Um, yeah. Uh, this was kind of fun, I'll admit. I feel like I didn't understand half of it, and half of this video is just me saying, no, I don't know. But, um, I did have a lot of fun making this. I might in the future, maybe when Lone Nightmares 3 comes out next year, I might make a giant retrospective or analysis on the series. But, not only would that be ambitious, but also I want to wait till 3 comes out before I try to make some big grand theory or something. Uh, anyway, for returning viewers, uh, I have a Petscop video planned that I originally canned at one point because I was basically just making a second Pyrocynical Petscop video. Yeah, but I feel like I'm gonna go ahead and redo it with the idea that people who watch it have already watched Petscop. And I want to try to make a more realistic look at Petscop because so many people talk about like emerging timelines and shit when I don't really think Petscop involves that. Um, I might make some Risk of Rain shit posts at some point. I don't really know. I've tried making shit post videos before, and I just don't really think they are what I'm good at, if that makes sense. Like, I enjoy editing, and I know I throw in jokes here and there, haha, but it's like trying to make a continuous video of nothing but jokes, I feel like is kind of hard. <laughs> um, I might have a video looking at CSGO's lore, or if maybe y'all really want to be fucking bored, a video where I decide to, like, I had this idea a while back of, like, a CSGO campaign in my head and wrote about it. I could share that with y'all if y'all really want to see it. I don't know. Comment below if, if you want to. You're probably going to say no. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, sub, sub, subscribe. Dislike. Um.